I think people are perverts. I've maintained that. That's been, I've, that's the foundation of my career. Okay, in the most controversial news this week, at least here in India, the government has decided to bring the OTT platforms under the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. Now, what this means is that the content on these platforms will now be closely monitored and will have to be approved by the Censor Board of India. This came as a surprise to a lot of people. But frankly, it shouldn't have. OTT platforms are some of the few platforms that were yet to be regulated by a proper government body. You could post anything you wanted and get away with it. And this was a concern for a lot of people. Sooner or later, the government would have intervened. And now it did. What's more interesting is that how will the government censor OTT platforms with such a massive back catalog? Television and theatres are a lot easier to censor because they not only control what you watch, but how you watch it and when you watch it. And OTT platforms like Netflix and Amazon Prime are the exact opposite of that. You can watch anything you want, anywhere you want, anytime you want. Let's take this situation for example. Netflix India has almost 3000 movies. Now, does the government want Netflix to go through all those 3000 movies and censor the parts that they don't like? Because that is a lot of work for Netflix and for any other streaming service. And we don't even know how much or what they will censor because their guidelines are intentionally so vague that they can potentially censor anything they want. So maybe they go the other route. They censor the content that is about to come out. Their reasoning being, first, it's easier to censor because it's not out as of yet. Second, it's going to be new. More people are going to watch it and in turn, more people are going to be exposed to it. But that's not necessarily true. Movie A, which is about to come out on Netflix, might be less popular than a 10 year old movie that's already on Netflix and might have the similar kind of content. So how does the government go around censoring all this content that's already out there? It all comes down to where is the line? Where is the line between necessary and unnecessary censorship? Most of the people are concerned that shows like Sacred Games and Mirzapur are going to be ruined if they are censored. And that is true somewhat. But we shouldn't forget that movies like Gangs of Asapur were still released in India. Movies like Urta Punjab were still released in India. Granted, they had to go through a lot of hoops to get their movies released. And that is part of the Indian censor board problem. P filmmakers are given too many barricades to cross to get their movies made. But in all this discussion about censoring of online content, people are forgetting one major thing. Censoring is not just about nudity, about violence, about language. Censoring is a lot more than that. Topics like LGBTQ+, religion, race, nationalism, these kinds of topics are also under censorship. Filmmakers are mostly concerned about these points because frankly, they have been going through this in Bollywood for a long time. And this was their one outlet where they could do whatever they wanted. Now, who are going to be most affected by this? First are the software pornographic series being sold as TV shows from Alt Balaji and a few others. Those are going to be hit the hardest as soon as the rules are implemented. Second are the shows that are around certain topics that the government or the concerning bodies might not like or might not get along with their ideologies. Third are the shows that are directly made in India, shows like Mirzapur and Sacred Games. Their violence or sexual content or anything else is going to be toned down a bit. And last ones are the foreign shows that are coming on Netflix. Because Netflix has been very stubborn when it comes to censoring it con its contents. We just have to wait for the guidelines. We don't have the guidelines as of yet. And even when we do get the guidelines, they are going to be very vague. So when the first batch of censorships arrive, when the first movies, when the first shows are censored, then we will know what kind of things we can look forward to. Thankfully, all the other news is a lot more cheerful. So we should talk about that more. Last week, we talked about Johnny Depp leaving the Fantastic Beast franchise. Now, it seems that we already have an update. Matt Mikkelsen is in talks to play the role of Grindelwald. Now, this is not confirmed, but it is as good as confirmed. And Matt Mikkelsen is easily the best replacement for Johnny Depp. Now, it's a given that Johnny Depp being in the Fantastic Beast franchise would have been the best option. 
But if we can't have that, Mads Mikkelsen is easily the best option. If any of you have seen his acting in Hannibal, you already know how good this role is going to be for him. So I really look forward to seeing him if he is cast in this, which I hope he is. But I look forward to seeing him in this movie. Now let's move on to the Disney section of the video because Disney owns almost everything. Okay, so Wonder Vision has been pushed to 2021. Now we never actually had a proper release date for 2020, but it was heavily implied by Disney that the show was going to release around December of 2020. But it has been now pushed to January 15th of 2021. Now this makes 2020 the only year after 2010 without a Marvel movie or TV show. So it's nice to have a break, but. I was really looking forward to Wonder Vision. Apparently the first episode was filmed in black and white in front of a live audience just because they are going the whole sitcom route with it. Also James Gunn has finished the script for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Now that movie is not coming anytime soon. But it's good to hear that at least the script is written and they are working on the movie now. And Disney being Disney, we have yet another live action remake of a classic animated movie. This time it's Lilo and Stitch. and the director they have got for it is john m chow now he directed the crazy rich asians and he is a pretty good director but who is asking for more remakes we don't need more remakes but well disney needs the money and it's making them a lot of money and we finally have an update on a news that we talked about quite a while back on a website articles hashtag seamless plug but we talked about the reunion that is happening for the fresh prince of bel air cast and we finally have the first look nobody ever asked me <laughs> if i could act this joke and you could and you could <laughs> and it looks pretty good for a reunion without uncle phil but what's going to be more fun is how they handle the drama between the two aunt vivians and will smith of course and we talked about the drama quite a bit in the article so i'm going to link it below if you want to read up on it but so far the trailer looks nice and it's good to see the cast back together I couldn't celebrate 30 years of Fresh Prince without Janet. Wow. Oh, wow. <gasps> and we have another adaptation because of course we don't have enough of those and this time it's Jane Austen. And I mean the works of Jane Austen are pretty good they can be adapted really nicely. Period pieces are very hot right now the crown is doing really well and jane austen the topics she covered are more or less still relevant right now so i don't think there's any way they can ruin this right oh no oh no now i'm not saying that jane austen's novels cannot work in the modern times but just because cw is involved i'm going to take a hard pass on this one and hopefully it's decent but i don't have high hopes for this adaptation at least It was also announced that Stephen Knight, the creator of Peaky Blinders, is making a new series around the 80s two-tone music. Now, I have no idea what this music entails. I have never been into this genre, but if this is something you find interesting, you should look out for it. And well, it's by Stephen Knight, so it's going to be decent at the least. And in one of the most fun news this week, the award season has officially started. It was kicked off by the Gotham Award Show, which is also celebrating its 30th anniversary. This is one of the few shows to start the award season and most of the shows have been pushed back due to covid-19 but they are still happening. This award show mostly has independent movies or majorly movies that have a budget less than 35 million dollars and they already put out a list of their nominations. Now here's the fun part. These 5 are the best picture nominees for the Gotham Award show. And for the first time in history, all 5 of these have been directed by females. Now, I don't think I need to say this but a person's gender in no way shape or form has any bearing on their directing capability but it is hard to ignore that this section of the film industry is mostly dominated by males and it's fun to see especially in the independent film category that so many women are stepping up and as long as we are getting good movies it doesn't even matter who is directing them now before moving on to the last major topic let's cover some of the smaller ones right now The Mortal Kombat movie that was apparently still happening has been delayed indefinitely while The Rock is remaking The Scorpion King because apparently the first one did so well for him. Jurassic World Dominion has finished shooting after 18 months of filming and we have a 
confirmed season 2 for space force hasan minaj joins the cast for the morning show on Net- apple tv plus while we got the trailer for the fourth season of big mouth which apparently is still relevant david fincher apparently has a four year deal with netflix still going on which means we can expect love death and robot season 2 but not mind hunter season 3 so yay for that and last but not least demon slayer the movie has officially crossed 200 million dollars making it the ninth highest grossing movie of 2020 which gets me even more hyped for season 2 of demon slayer and in the last bit of news for that i need to give you a bit of context ken burns is a filmmaker who makes movies about america not in the michael bay style but about actual america and i think he describes it best himself in an interview he said i've had the privilege of spending my entire life making films about the us capital u capital s but i've also had the privilege of making films about us the two letter lower case plural pronouns that has a kind of intimacy and warmth to it now keeping that in mind he said that he's making six movies right now and those will be about ernest hemingway the american revolution muhammad ali Benjamin Franklin, Lloyd B. Jensen, and Buffalo's. The interview he did is a very fascinating read, and I will link it down in the description for you to check out. He seems the kind of guy who loves his country more than anything else, yet can still see the flaws in the system. And I'm pretty sure there's a lesson in there somewhere. And while you look for it, I'll see you next time.